What we're looking at here are two preparatory studies that Canaletto made for Joseph Smith um, sometime in the early 1720s. And um, they're preparatory studies for the first commission that Canaletto made for Smith. And this was for a set of six monumental paintings that are also in the Royal Collection. They were lucky to be able to show the preparatory studies as, as well as the paintings that they were intended for. And Canaletto would have submitted these drawings to his patron to make sure that he approved of, of his designs before he carried them out. They were intended as pairs, so you can see in the paintings and in the studies that the weight of the architecture is on one side of the sheet or the other. The, the drawings are, are quite loose and free in their execution, especially compared to some of the other drawings that we have by Canaletto, which are very highly finished. And this is because they weren't intended to show the minute details of the architecture. They were just to show to Smith um, as, a, as an example of how his finished paintings might look and just to convey the drama that he intended to, to put across in the paintings. What's really interesting about Canaletto's paintings is that it's really clear to see that he was working um, on the canvas, changing his mind as he worked and painting bits out. And it's been great that we've been able to find out that he was going through the same working process in his drawings. In particular, we've taken an infrared image of this drawing on the right, which shows the two columns at the entrance to the Piazza San Marco. One is crowned with the Lion of St. Mark, and the other, which we don't see in the pen and ink drawing, um, has a statue of St. Theodosius. But the infrared image has shown that actually, in his underdrawing, Canaletto originally drew in the, the column with the statue of St. Theodosius in the right place but then worked over the top with pen and ink, probably decided that the column was too much, perhaps, and, and decided not to draw it in. But then when we go back to the painting, he's changed his mind again, and he's returned the column to its correct place in the painting and painted out the column on the left, um, probably to make the two work better as a pair. These paintings were commissioned for a particular room in Smith's Palazzo on the Grand Canal, um, and they would have been intended to hang in pairs um, in a very dramatic arrangement. And Canaletto has chosen the Piazza San Marco, the area around San, San Marco, which is the civic and religious heart of Venice, so highly recognisable sites. I think what makes Canaletto a great artist is his uniquely sensitive observation of things which might be weather or light effects, people going about their daily business, how dogs behave. I've always been a particular fan of Canaletto's depiction of dogs. I'm sure he was a great lover of dogs. Um, each one is different and each one has a different character. I mean, it probably derives ultimately from Dutch painting but it's entirely new in Venetian painting of the 1720s. What we're looking at here is one of Canaletto's only surviving sketchbooks. It's in the Accademia in Venice. And it's a fascinating document because it shows us Canaletto's first response to the city that he saw around him. He would have carried it with him around Venice, um, making notes into it of, of the facades of the buildings, mainly sequences on the Grand Canal in this sketchbook. And it dates to around the 1720s, so around about the time that he was first starting to make um, view paintings and to sell them to patrons. This page, um, for example, shows here is the Car Rosonico on the left, which was then known as the Car Bon. Um, and it's a sequence moving across to the Car Foscari. But you really get a sense of how Canaletto was using the pages of the, of the sketchbook to, to record the view. So he continues the sequence here, the edge of the Car Foscari here. And then he's moved down the canal, further down. And so the Car Foscari is now much larger. So he redraws again the facade of that building and continues the sequence. The Palazzo Balbi, which was the last building on the previous page, continues here. And so the sequence continues through the book. 
And he's also annotated it with, with his notes. So we've got buildings labelled like the Carbon and the Carfoscary. But we've also got little notes that's, that are going to help him later when he's making his paintings. So B is for Bianco or white. R here is for Rosso or red. And then here, Sporco is dirty. So he's saying that the facade of the building is a bit, a bit dirty. Um, and you've got um, splashes of paint. It's a, it's a working document that he was using to, to record his first insights into the city. This opening is very unusual because it shows boats and figures. And we've got on the, on the left hand side some of the details of the boats that Canaletto was recording in front of the Carfoscary. And they're drawn in a very similar way to the architecture. So the pen and ink, very simple outlines. But then when we move to his figure studies, they're drawn with a much greater flourish, much, much looser. The interesting thing about the way that he's drawing these characters is that he takes a very similar approach in his paintings, where they're painted with little flicks of the brush. Here it's little, little squiggles of black chalk, and it gives them a real a vibrancy and emotional energy, um, which is really going to give a, a narrative focus to his paintings. The joy of this painting for me is the strong contrasts. Um, it's the darks are very dark and the lights are very bright. And the contrasts between the way the architecture is painted very formally and the crowd scene, you get a lot of highly impasted little blobs. So over here, the chicken coops, the, the hens poking their heads out of the coops are completely convincing with just a few little touches of impasted paint. And then the, the group of the figures watching the Punch and Judy show, here's Mr Punch just appearing out, out of the curtain. Canaletto's very good at just putting a few little blobs on to make the sunlight catch the face of the audience. And what I love about this one is that instead of just painting the folds of the fabric of the back of the puppet booth, you have really the sense of somebody's body, some, someone or some bodies in there pushing out the back of the curtain. And what's charming about this painting is that there's a little fingerprint here by the artist. He's just modulated the, the light paint the fingerprint is definitely the artist. It's, it's into the wet paint. Being the most efficient way of making the right stone texture, just in that little bit. You don't get fingerprints happening very often in his work, so it's more charming and more precious that it's there. <laughs> 